Both of these folks have a pretty extensive background, so I'm just going to cover some of it, uh, introduce them. Uh, but before I do that, um, quick show of hands, how many people are doing threat hunting in memory, looking for hostile actors in memory, right? So it's a, it's a difficult problem. Um, and so I'm really, really excited to personally to hear this talk. Uh, this is a, an area that, that needs a whole lot of work to be done in it. And, uh, and it's, you know, folks like uh, Carlos and Marcos that are, that are you know, on the, on the edge of, of providing this kind of content for us. Um, so Marcos is a software architect at McAfee. Um, he's leading the development of exploit prevention technology components, uh, which are part of uh, the company, I, McAfee's uh, next generation flagship product called Endpoint Security. Uh, Marco also led the organization of the first ever B-Sites conference in Cordoba, uh, Argentina. Um, Carlos is uh, an experienced InfoSec analyst who drives strategic initiatives and provides thought leadership and insight regarding the ever-changing global landscape at Claro America Mobile Offices in uh, South America. He organized the One Hack Para Los Chicos Local Security Conference and uh, is now working on organizing the first ever B-Sides Conference in Cordoba, Argentina. So um, great, great to have these folks come and, and, uh, and share their research with us. Uh, give them a round of applause. Okay. Okay. Thank you all for being here, and thank you for attending this call, uh, this talk, and thank you, Blue Team uh, Villas, for, for having us here. Uh, this talk is going to be about uh, this uh, project that we started like a year ago called uh, Mem Hunter. For us, it was it was really a way to to learn and and, and new and past code injection techniques and process manipulation in general, and also it was. Uh, a way for us to explore and how to cope up with a problem that we were having on, on the field, which was around um, doing this uh, threat hunting process in memory at scale. So we will talk about that uh, during, during the slide, and we'll talk about the, the problem that we are trying to solve. So this is the agenda for today. So, uh, so probably we'll, we will skip the, the first uh, slide um, uh, and then the introduction part. Then we will jump into the why, the how, and the what part of uh, this, uh, this issue. So on the why, we will, we will dive into why hunting in memory is important, uh, at least from our perspective. I will give some, some, some uh, hints on, on that. Then on uh, the how part of things, we will discuss on the how uh, someone can go and hunt for this stuff in memory by looking at a specific uh, properties of, uh, of the processes. And then on the what part of uh, the, the agenda, we will discuss uh, the tools. On this tool that we have created called Mem Hunter, we will discuss on the characteristics of the tool, and we will also talk about uh, on the, the current uh, state of the tool and then the future. Uh, and we will wrap up everything uh, with, uh, with a demo, uh, with two demos, actually. Okay, uh, about us. So, okay, do you want to? Yeah. Okay. Oh, hello, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Carlos. He's Marcos. Uh, he is uh, InfoSec lover. Uh, he he works in in McAfee. Uh, he's a ar software architect. Sorry for my English. Uh, You're we, doing it great. Okay. Uh, we we are um, beside Cordoba organizers. Okay. And I work in in Arsec. It's a startup of uh, Info Security. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. So why why hunting in memory? So a uh, couple of things here. So why hunting in memory these days? Uh, it's, it's, uh, I mean, hunting in memory is an important thing because of uh, the shift that we haven't seen on the threat landscape. So the threat landscape has, has evolved over the last few years. Mainly, the, the attackers have mainly started to, to adopt new techniques, to, to, to adopt new things to evade the, the current detections. So they shifted the, their, 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 their attacker, attacker tradecraft from a, a, a purely file-based uh, uh, approach to a fileless uh, based approach. Um, so one trend or, or one aspect of uh, this uh, evolution is what we call the different uh, vectors that they are using for that. So one of these vectors is uh, what I call the process manipulation. 
Uh, so as part of uh, the process manipulation, there are several things that attackers do in order to evade the current defenses. Um, one of those uh, manipulations uh, are what, what is called the, the code injection, right? The, there is another type of mani process manipulation called uh, defense evasion. So we will touch on that uh, during, during the, the presentation. What I wanted to mention here is that mainly because of this trend is what uh, uh, people working on the blue side of the house have to uh, uh, come up with the new new ways to to detect this uh, this stuff, and another thing that which is actually quite important is the fact that uh, in the past uh, these uh, techniques, this especially the code injection techniques, they used to be uh, uh, something that was only available for you know these big uh, sponsor uh, APT groups, mo mostly national state groups, uh, and they they know. Uh, how to take advantage of this just to avoid you know being detected and being spot, uh, spotted uh, on, on the, you know on their uh, on their uh, uh, intrusions um, but nowadays that that is not actually the case nowadays it's uh, code injection techniques especially are, are, a, are a commodity I mean uh, anyone can go to GitHub, for example, and grab uh, you know the latest and, and greatest uh, code injection and include it on their code. So accessing to these uh, these techniques uh, are 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 available to anyone uh, right now. Uh, so that's why we we need to uh, start thinking on including uh, uh, ways to to detect this stuff uh, on memory. So going going back to the fileless. Uh, 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 state that, uh, that I just mentioned. So there are. Uh, I, I I really like this uh, diagram that was uh, taken from a uh, 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 Sans uh, 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 white paper. So the idea here is that uh, from the diagram you can see where code injection came into the into play uh, on the fileless uh, attack uh, scenario. So you see that code injection is used uh, as part of. Uh, uh, I mean, it's mostly used. Uh, uh, this this series of techniques is, are mostly used as uh, stages on a staged attack. So uh, for example, in the, this uh, scenario where we got a remote code execution uh, attack where uh, someone is executing or gaining executing, uh, execution on our, an hour uh, uh, endpoint. An example of this is uh, the, the WannaCry example, for example, where, where we have uh, the SMB vulnerable driver, driver and then uh, uh, by exploiting uh, that vulnerability, someone can get uh, code to execute an, an, an endpoint, and then they, they will most likely use uh, uh, they, they will mostly uh, uh, trigger the second stage of that attack by um, by injecting uh, their malicious payload into the memory, the user space memory of a running process, the system process, most likely. So, in the case of WannaCry, for example, they use a technique uh, called Q user APC. Which allows them to uh, uh, um, to uh, execute code, to inject code into the context of ELSAs uh, from a kernel space. So, so in that case, uh, code injection was used as a as a second stage of an attack. And uh, and the most uh, common attacks that we are seeing nowadays, which are mostly driven by download, download, we see that code injection is used as a second stage of the attack. So. Uh, the attacker uh, uh, gain uh, code execution through a Word document, for example, just by having uh, the user to open a, a, a document with a macro. Then the, the macro will exercise some Win32 Win APIs, and then the, the injection will happen, and the, the attacker will be able to uh, run code in the context of a different process. So that's where code injection is uh, actually a, a thing nowadays. So uh, yeah, so we, we know what, what uh, these techniques are. We know how to catch them, actually, uh, but why? Why is that difficult to to hunt for this stuff uh, at scale? So the 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 the, the problem comes on, on the uh, tools and tech, uh, yeah, on the tools and frameworks that we have to hunt for for this stuff. So uh, currently, the the mo I mean, you you have I mean, if you want to hunt for this stuff, you only have uh, two ways uh, from what I from my point of view. You either go and buy uh, a, a, an expensive EDR product that supports these uh, techniques. There are several EDR products out there that uh, either does uh, uh, memory inspection, which is the, the, sing the, the same thing that I'm doing with this tool, or a memory scanner, and they, they do a, you know, damn uh, pattern matching on the memory of uh, the, the different processes to look for IOCs and see if uh, there is an injection going on. So you either have to go and do that, or you get uh, volatility, and you get a full memory dump of the machine that you want to analyze, and take that full memory dump 
uh, 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 into the volatility framework uh, uh, and, and, and run the different uh, uh, scanners that volatility have in order to detect for this stuff on the on that on that dump. The problem with that approach is that it, it doesn't scale. I mean, if you want, if you if you had to do that, you have to go to the machine that you uh, think. Uh, might contain some 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 of uh, of, uh, of uh, something living in memory. You have to dump. Uh, you, uh, you have to get a full memory dump of that machine. You have to grab that memory dump into a forensic environment and then analyze the stuff in there. The problem with that uh, is that um, you cannot do that at scale. You cannot do that uh, every day on on your organization on any machine on your organization. So mainly because of that, uh, we, we created this tool called uh, Mem Hunter. So what Mem Hunter will do, so I'm just giving a, a, a brief spoiler because we are seeing that in, in detail in a moment. But uh, what Mem Hunter will do is that it will perform what, what is called a memory inspection on every process on the every process on the endpoint, and it will apply the same type of heuristics uh, and, and, and an extra couple of more uh, that uh, that detects for this stuff in memory, and it will report that back to you. Uh, so through that, you can uh, run this uh, periodically, or either as a service or on demand, and get the results of uh, your entire organization uh, at scale. So okay, so we just talked about the why. So now we will talk a bit uh, about the how uh, we can hunt for this stuff uh, in memory. So on the how part, we will uh, mention uh, uh, a bit. Uh, we will we will uh, uh, sorry. Uh, we will we will do a quick overview on the on the uh, on what the process manipulation is, what the properties of a process are affected by a process manipulation or a code injection techniques. And then we will also describe. Uh, uh, we will also give a, a few, uh, give you a few details on the, how a process is created uh, on the when a, uh, on the on the Windows uh, environment. So talking about the process manipulation. So process manipulation is a is a for me is a uh, uh, an umbrella term that can be used for any type of uh, technique used to compromise a legitimate uh, process and have it to execute malicious code. So you can do that uh, either by uh, performing a code injection through memory allocation or memory writing. You can do that by uh, getting, forcing the process to execute something. Or you can do that through a mechanism that, that are available uh, in, in the Windows environment to force a DLL to, to be loaded uh, during the process start. Uh, so going into the Win32 uh, process internals, uh, the thing that I wanted you, that I wanted you to take uh, from here, I mean, we can spend hours talking about this, but uh, the most important things for, for this talk is the fact that uh, the Windows kernel is, is the one in charge of uh, allocating the, I mean, when, when a process is started, uh, the, the Windows kernel is the one in charge of uh, creating the, what is called the e-process uh, uh, process object that will take care of uh, the different uh, uh, areas that that process container will have. Um, along, among those areas, uh, there will be uh, memory areas uh, designated for the different threads that we will run within that process. So every thread uh, which are, by the way, the ones that will be running code. I mean, the process itself uh, is not running any code, it's just the thread, the ones that are running the code. So the, the, there will be a, a, a call stack uh, designated for every thread. There will be also a, a, an area within the process internal called PEB, which is the process environment block that will contain information on the common line used for the process, the, some uh, information about the, 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 the properties of the image file. Um, yeah, and a couple of other things that we'll mention in a second. Then there will be areas around uh, that that will that will hold information um, uh, regarding the the, the dynamic uh, uh, libraries that will that the process will load. Uh, and within those uh, dynamic libraries, uh, I wanted to mention that every library loaded uh, within a, a, a Windows process will have a, will follow what is called the PE format. Which is a format described by Microsoft to uh, load stuff in memory. Uh, so that that is going to be important for one of the the, the things that we will be discussing in a second. So uh, just to wrap up a couple of things that I just mentioned. So the process properties, uh, the thread properties, and the memory properties are the things that define you know the normal or a standard behavior of a of a process. Uh, 
So, okay, so why, why I am mentioning this and why I put in so emphasis on, on this? It's because of the fact that we will use that as a way to uh, detect uh, anomalies uh, in, the, in the either the process properties, the thread properties, or the memory properties, to, to, uh, and we will use that, that to, to hunt uh, for stuff in memory. So I'm giving three examples here as a bit of a spoiler. Uh, we will discuss this in, in a bit more detail in a second, but uh, the idea is that, that for example, uh, as I mentioned, every uh, piece of code that you run on a process uh, have to run in a thread. So you can you you will you will expect I mean in a normal scenario that that thread will have to run from code that is actually backed by a file on disk. So usually what what is happening is that uh, you you have your process you load your process uh, and the, uh, you create threads uh, and that thre those threads have to run from code that they will be. Uh, uh, that will be part of the main module, the main executable, or they will be part of a DLL uh, within the, uh, that, that was loaded by the process, right? So uh, uh, there might be a scenarios uh, where the process uh, is not running, uh, sorry, that the thread is not running from a code that is packed on this, and those scenarios are mostly, um, no, not 100% of the cases, but are mostly caused by, uh, this, uh, by the side effects uh, uh, and, the, and the artifacts left by this uh, code injection technique. So whenever we found a thread whose start address is not is running from memory that is not backed by this, we might say, okay, you know, this heuristics because we call that heuristic. The heuristic might might, might might be telling us that there might be something suspicious on that thread that might require further attention, and that's what the tool will actually report. So the tool will basically uh, flag those processes with anomalies for Thread Hunter to go and look the, in, in detail. Uh, another uh, potentially, uh, another uh, anomaly that we might end up using is the memory permissions for the uh, base address of uh, the threads. <coughs> so uh, the threads are supposed to be from uh, memory regions that are marked as uh, read uh, um, execute but there, might, there are code injections that left those uh, memory regions marked as a read, write, execute. So that, caused, uh, uh, the, the, uh, that will cause uh, one of uh, our heuristics to, to, to fire, basically. Then uh, in terms of uh, memory properties, uh, we can also look for, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, memory regions uh, with the read, write, uh, execute permissions. We can also look for odd allocations. So whenever you allocate a, a piece of uh, 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 allocate and commit a, a, a piece of um, virtual memory within the context of a process. There will be two uh, a meta metadata fields within that memory regions that will indicate the, the state of uh, those uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, the, the, the sorry the, the protection the, yeah the, the, the state of uh, that memory region region I mean is that memory region is a read write execute region or uh, something else. Uh, so the, there are cases uh, that uh, techniques. Uh, initially allocates uh, the memory region with uh, read, write, execute, and then uh, uh, call a, a Win32 API called virtual protect to move those memory regions back to read, execute, so you can look uh, legit. Uh, but they, uh, uh, they, there is a flag within those uh, memory regions metadata that, is, that will still contain the initial allocation uh, uh, value. So by looking into the uh, mismatch between those values is uh, is a way to, to, to determine if there might have been a, a potential code injection in place. Uh, then uh, in terms of memory content, uh, there are a couple of things that we can do here. Uh, I mean, one thing is just go and do, you know, the regular dumb uh, IOC match which is uh, effective, but it's but is very costly in terms of uh, performance. So I there, there are EDR vendors that are, uh, you know, have uh, modules that are specialized on doing this. They are mostly running uh, drivers uh, that scan the memory of the process and looking for specific patterns and, and flag, you know, a, a threat event whenever something uh, malicious is found. In our case, uh, we, we were not able to do that, again, mainly because of performance reason. Manhunter is just a user space application. So we, uh, we cannot afford, you know, just going and scanning uh, the memory of the entire memory base of a, of a process. So uh, mainly because of that, what we are doing is something called uh, the virtual query walk. 
So what basically uh, what we're doing is that we are walking the different memory regions of every process, and then in some cases we are looking for you know just a few uh, f first uh, uh, bytes within those memory regions, uh, looking for. Uh, you know, signs of uh, a P file within that, that, that region, like uh, looking for the MC header uh, within the, those, those first uh, few bytes. Or we look for, uh, you know, uh, uh, associated uh, strings uh, left by attacker uh, threatcraft. Uh, but again, uh, this is uh, uh, optimized just to look for a specific stuff and not for entire content of uh, the memory region. Okay, so uh, having said that, uh, we will jump into uh, two examples of uh, both code injection uh, and, and, uh, 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 and, and defense evasion uh, approaches. Uh, the, these examples are actually not quite new. They have been in the, in the field for quite some time now. Uh, the, the first one is uh, reflective DLL injection. So reflective uh, DLL injection uh, is, a, is a technique that got the uh, popularized uh, a, few, a couple of years back. It was uh, created and released by a guy from Germany called Stephen Feuer. Uh, what this technique uh, was to, uh, I mean the, the purpose of this technique was to um, allow the, 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 yeah, mostly the, the, the people interested on this kind of approach to uh, load code uh, uh, in the context of a remote process just by using a DLL. So the idea is that you get the, the reflective DLL framework, you create your DL, DLL, you include a part of that framework within your code, uh, compile your DLL, and then uh, the, the result of that compilation is something that you can embed into the, atta the, your, your attacking process, or uh, it's something that you can read, read from, from the file system if that, that is what you, you wanted to do. But the idea is that once you get that, that, that blob, of, blob of data into the context of uh, the attacking process, you will write you will write that uh, that app into the victim process. Uh, actually, sorry, uh, you, you will allocate first, you know, the uh, read, write, execute uh, a big chunk of memory in the context of a remote process. Then you will write that down into the context of a remote process, and then you will spawn a thread, a new thread uh, that will run out of uh, that, uh, that floating read, write, execute uh, code. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, biggest or the most well-known uh, consumers of uh, these techniques was uh, Metasploit on with this uh, meta interpreter uh, payload. So initially, they, they used this to move uh, the, the the payload around, you know, processes using this technique to go in a pure fileless way. Uh, nowadays, I think that they are using it as a kind of a fallback. They, they I think they start with a different technique the Q user APC one, and then use this as a fallback in case that the previous one fails. Um, but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, but, but the thing, the, the important thing here is that the anomalies that this technique will introduce uh, within the context of the process is that, that after the technique is executed, you will run a, a new thread running from a floating code, right? So there will be a big, uh, a new thread that was not there before, and the base address of that thread will be a, 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 a code, a memory region marked as read, write, execute, which, will, which is not uh, backed uh, by a model on disk. Then if you look into the call stack of that thread, there will be a stock frames that will, again, will be not um, uh, backed by a symbol uh, uh, by, uh, on uh, one of the models uh, on disk. And that basically means that, uh, uh, I mean, for this particular technique, that basically means that th that thread uh, uh, was created out of a uh, shellcode that uh, in, in the case of uh, this technique it was used to bootstrap the, the malicious payload that you are, you are using. So basically the technique uh, simplifies that uh, bootstrapping uh, for you. So you are putting your regular DLL code uh, and the bootstrapping co shellcode will take care of uh, uh, mapping sections, resolving imports, uh, fixing up relocations, and um, yeah, a couple of extra things. But the idea is that after after the, the execution uh, happens, uh, these three anomalies uh, can be will can be seen. Uh, will I mean we will be able to see these three anomalies in the process. Okay, so ne now uh, jumping into a, a defense uh, evasion example, the process Halloween one. So the idea here is that. Uh, uh, you want to run. Uh, you want to evade. Uh, you know the uh, the the available uh, endpoint protection stack. 
So you want to evade the, the AVs and the EDR, uh, most likely uh, on, on the endpoint. You want to, your, your malicious uh, process to look as legit for uh, these solutions. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and you want to use a, a, a legit process as a container for your malicious code. Uh, and this technique works by the, by again using uh, le legal uh, Win32 Win APIs. So the idea is that you create a process in suspended state. Uh, then you get the, I mean, when, when a process is created in suspended state, uh, the, that process will not be assigned with uh, any, you know, uh, time uh, in the uh, scheduling time in the kernel. It will be just, uh, you know, freeze uh, will, uh, with uh, just a, a, a one a single thread that will be also freeze. So nothing uh, will, will happen. Then uh, w once you, the process is created in suspended state, you can get the, 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 the execution context of that thread. Uh, from the execution context and by also and, and by also walking you know the memory of uh, uh, of uh, that that process uh, you can uh, with those two inputs you can determine which is the main module of uh, of uh, for that thread uh, and then you can uh, call this API called nt and map view of section which will end up uh, unmapping you know the the main module from uh, from the from the process. Uh, and then you, there are a couple of things uh, that you can do uh, that, at that point in time. Uh, um, there are more evasive ways of uh, uh, or, or writing the, the, your malicious payload into that process. In this case, and just for simplification, uh, I, I just uh, mentioned that uh, uh, one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, possibilities that the attacker can do, can follow, is that they, they can call virtual alloc. Again, allocating a big chunk of uh, read, write, execute memory. They can they can uh, write uh, you know the payload into that memory, and then they can uh, redirect uh, the the, uh, the the execution context of uh, the, uh, the the thread that is posed to this new uh, memory region, and then they can resume uh, the thread. So that will force the your uh, uh, the, the the malicious uh, the host the host the process to run your code, but at the same time as uh, no other thing has been modified on the process, just the, uh, the we, we just force the, the the victim process to run a different uh, uh, module. Uh, the process will for for the operating system and for EDR solutions uh, the will process will look like uh, will look as will look as legit. So the the P the PB. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, most of the, the stuff on the process will not be touched. Uh, yeah, so we will see that uh, in a moment too. Uh, uh, so, in, in terms of anomalies and uh, and in terms of uh, ways to detect this uh, this stuff, so the the most likely the most uh, uh, the, the the best heuristic to detect uh, something like this will be to uh, uh, check uh, uh, for the uh, p header fields of the main module on memory versus the p header fields of the counterpart on disk. So by, by checking that, you can detect if uh, uh, there is a mismatch, with, uh, we, 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 which uh, should never happen. And if there is a mismatch, we can uh, report that as something uh, suspicious. So yeah. OK, so we just talked about those two examples. We will, we will just talk about the process properties and how we can detect stuff. We will now jump into the what part of uh, the talk, which is around uh, how to perform this as a, a, at scale uh, as part of our threat hunting process, uh, and this is where we are introducing MemHunter. So, um, so this is a tool uh, that we I probably mentioned this already, but <laughs> anyways, uh, uh, this is a tool that we 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 started some some time ago, and again, it was a, a way for us to to explore on these uh, techniques and ways and ways to uh, ways to explore these uh, uh, capabilities. So. Uh, so MemHunter. MemHunter is a tool that uh, deploys itself as a standalone binary. Uh, it will, once uh, the tool is running, it will uh, perform a series of uh, inspection heuristics, which are the anomalies thing that uh, I was just mentioning. So, uh, and then uh, whenever the, there is a find, finding, the tool will report that to the, to the user. So the idea is that you have all these, uh, this is an architecture of the tool. The idea is that you have a, 
uh, all these different heuristics in, in, uh, in, the, in the abstracted in this concept called uh, hunter modules. So every hunter is specialized on one of uh, one specific heuristic, and then uh, there is, uh, uh, along with the, the hunter, there is a uh, part of a company in the tool in charge of uh, doing the, the process context enumeration. There is a part of the tool uh, doing, in charge of doing the, the orchestration of the hunters. And there is a part of the tool in charge of uh, getting the, the forensic data. And something that I didn't quite mention is the fact that the tool can run uh, either as a, as a, a standalone service, well, which uh, is mainly a way for, to, for the tool to get the uh, the, the, the hunters to be driven by events. So we are using ETW to determine when the hunters will be triggered. So, for example, we are listening for uh, uh, kernel providers uh, from uh, ETW kernel providers to, to determine if there is a process, uh, is a process got created, if a thread got created, if an image was loaded. So th those kind of things will draw will drive uh, you know some hunters to run on the context of a process. So that's uh, the real time eventing way. And then you also have the point in time or standalone execution, execution analysis, which is the thing that we are going to demo. So the idea here is that you get the tool, uh, you, you get the, the binary of the tool, uh, and you run it with admin privilege, and the tool will perform the process enumeration, and it will uh, perform, the, it will apply the heuristics over every uh, process uh, on the endpoint. Uh, Okay, so uh, currently uh, the tools support nine hunter heuristics, and so we will see that uh, uh, in the next slide. Along with the tool, uh, I have also created as a way to exercise uh, uh, the different hunter heuristics. I created uh, this tool, a uh, separate tool called M Injector, which is basically a test tool, which are 15 code injection techniques. Uh, I'm probably going to include a uh, uh, and the new f injection framework <laughs> to add a couple of uh, extra techniques. So there was a great talk yesterday on code injection uh, in general, uh, which uh, uh, they, they released a, a framework, um, which I cannot remember the name, to be honest, sorry. But uh, yeah, but uh, anyways, uh, the, that framework is, is great. Uh, I, will, I, will, uh, I will start to use it. And then the, the tool will also um, generate some event logs. Uh, and it also support the, the, some uh, baseline, uh, some exclusion, because uh, uh, as I mentioned, the, the tool will not give you data on which malware, or which uh, attacker, the tradecraft is running on the endpoint. It will just give you a hint that there is something uh, suspicious on the endpoint. So you have to go and, and, and find yourself, you know, what, what is going on. And that uh, also means that, that the tool might end up reporting false positives. So for, 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 sorry, for the false positive scenario, you have to have a way to exclude some processes. Uh, the processes that most likely are going to cause false positives are the, the processes that uh, use, techniques, use these techniques for legit uh, purposes. Example of that is the, 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 the .NET processes, the managed processes, what, which, use, uh, which compile things uh, on the fly. Uh, and I have uh, JIT compilers. There are also products uh, uh, for, from security vendors that use code injection as a way to hook into stuff uh, to monitor behavior and so on. So there might be some positives, false positives. You have a, a exclusion a way to baseline your, your environment. Okay, talking about the, the hunters. Uh, as we have uh, nine uh, hunters, so we are running out of time for demo, so I will go really quick on, on this one. So the, the first one is a suspicious thread. It will look for the base uh, star address, and it will check for read-write execution flag. Suspicious call stack will look for uh, symbols that are not backed. Suspicious memory regions, it will check for the first few bytes uh, to, to look for, uh, you know, signs of uh, 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 P modules uh, that lo was loaded or that currently being loaded and used. Uh, so this base address is something that indicates that the main module is running from private commit and uh, marked as read write execute memory regions. Suspicious pair is uh, the thing that I just mentioned. Uh, suspicious modules, uh, modules uh, associated with the read write execute memory regions. Suspicious hollow, mo hollow models is the, the, these are cross check between the, the P header uh, field from the memory versus the counterpart on disk. Uh, registry persistent is just to, to look for uh, stuff like uh, this uh, uh, functionality from Windows to force uh, DLL to load into a, into a remote process. Uh, and the last one, suspicious shellcode, uh, is uh, mainly to look for uh, 
the well-known products from 86 and 864, uh, you know, shell codes. So uh, there are shell, uh, good amount of shell codes that start with the, the same set of uh, op codes. Uh, and this is something that I am develop, developing right now. So this is a, uh, you know, some evasions that have started to appear. Uh, a couple of, uh, I think it was the last year, between last year and the, uh, the year before the last one. So ways to evade the IDR solutions, like uh, uh, parent the PID spoofing uh, and the uh, and, uh, common line spoofing. So the way to do that is to, again, to cross-check information from the OS with the current things uh, on the PAB. Okay, uh, this is uh, the, the event in information, and this will be later available for reference. Uh, the set of information, forensic information that the tool reports. And after that, we will jump into the demo. Yeah. Okay, so Car Carlos here will help me with the demo. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> uh, okay, so the, the, the idea... Uh, the idea, yeah. The, the idea is that we will look first at the, you know, the uh, the expected behavior of a process. So Carlos will will open a, a notepad. Um, are, are you able to see? Yeah. So he, he will open notepad with a process hacker, which is a really convenient tool to to look for, you know, uh, the details and the properties of of a, of a process. Uh, and within. Uh, um, Notepad, he will check for the running threads of the processes, uh, of uh, that process. It will check for the call stack of those threads. And it will also, he, he will also check for the memory regions currently allocated just to just, uh, allow you to see that there are no memory regions with uh, read, write, execute uh, permissions. And after that, uh, we will uh, exercise the uh, reflective DLL injection, uh, the technique that we, that we just mentioned. Uh, and we will come back again to the tool, to the process hacker tool. We will, we will look for the anomalies, and then we will run MemHunter to see the, the thing that, that, uh, that reports. Hmm? Okay, just a second, guys. Okay, we'll switch uh, computers. Okay. Just a second. So we will use a uh, Win 10 RS4 machine for for this uh, testing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just one more second. Mm. There you go. Okay. So we have a. Uh, we have uh, our environment over here. Uh, we will, as I mentioned, we will run uh, Notepad first. Uh, then uh, we will go and uh, process hacker. We will check for the properties of Notepad. We, we see that uh, there are a bunch of uh, threads running because of uh, Windows. Uh, but uh, the important thing is that uh, there is uh, this thread running uh, out of uh, the main executable image from Notepad. If we open that thread, we can see the call stack. Uh, in the call stack, you see that all, that all the symbols in the call stack are mapped to a, by, uh, to a file on disk, right? Uh, and then if we go and check the memory, uh, we will see that there are, I mean, no memory uh, region with the read, write, execute. There are only read, either uh, read, read, execute, or read, write. Uh, and there is also memory regions with a copy and write. Uh, um, which are the which is the, the thing that um, uh, Microsoft uses for the, his uh, uh, copy and write uh, capabilities? Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so let, let's uh, go ahead and, and execute uh, an attack against uh, Notepad. So it's Notepad is process six zero two zero, 
So we will uh, we will run this tool. So this is an injector tool. Uh, it supports uh, 15 uh, techniques. I'm going to uh, add a couple of more uh, after uh, Defcon. Defcon. So if we run the uh, the technique number five, which is a reflective DLL injection, and then we ask the tool to run a payload that is part of uh, the M injector project called uh, M reflective payload, and then we target uh, the the PID of Notepad, which is six zero six zero two zero, and we run this. Uh, we will get that uh, this pop up coming from notepad that indicates there is now code that was injected and is running uh, uh, out of a notepad. Uh, and then if we go uh, back to the project, uh, to the process, sorry, uh, and check on the threads uh, area, we will see now that there is a new thread, uh, RTL use that I started, uh, that supposed to start, uh, that is showing to start from RTL user thread start. And if we check on the call stack of that thread, yeah, we will see that there is now two uh, uh, symbols that are not backed by any anything on disk. Our uh, process hacker is just run, is showing the the memory addresses of uh, those symbols, uh, and then uh, the memory area we can check that uh, there is, that there will be a read write execute uh, allocation uh, that will contain the malicious payload, which is this private commit allocation. Uh, if we open the location, we will see the P header signs in here. Okay, so now if we run Mem Hunter, so let's uh, go ahead and run Mem Hunter. So Mem Hunter, this is uh, the output that you get from Mem Hunter. So we will apply a specific heuristic to Mem Hunter. The one that that we're interested in is the the suspicious thread. Uh, you you don't have to apply any heuristic uh, when when you run this. In this case, we're we're just doing it for for the sake of of time. Uh, and then we will ask Mem Hunter to be verbose on his output. Uh, so Mem Hunter will run a bit. It will again. It will enumerate the process. It will perform the virtual query walk on, on all the processes. And, and after that, it will report that there is something suspicious on notepad.dxc on this specific uh, thread ID. Uh, and these are the details of that memory region. Uh, okay. So that's uh, demo number one. Okay. Uh, demo number two uh, again is uh, uh, the, the, the defense evasion example that we just uh, mentioned. Uh, demo number two, we are uh, launching. Let's uh, close this Notepad instance, and we will use also Notepad as a as a target, as a hosting process for our attack. So we are running technique number seven, uh, which is a uh, process Halloween. We are uh, Pointing uh, uh, M injector to use another payload. Oh, sorry, another payload, uh, which is in this case is uh, uh, MSEC payload. There you go. And then the target is going to be Notepad again. Yeah, there you go. So the technique just executed. So we just hollow out the main memory of uh, Notepad. So if we check on Notepad, uh, the process uh, looks uh, pretty legit. Looks as a signed process from Microsoft. Uh, it, it contains uh, uh, some threads. The the, the thread is con contains a potentially valid uh, call stack. I mean, there are no issues from a simple. Uh, side. So we'll run uh, 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 Mem Hunter, but this time uh, we will use uh, a different uh, uh, heuristic, uh, a heuristic number four that will perform the uh, the cross check between the the, uh, the p header uh, uh, field from the things on memory versus something on disk on all the processes running on the on the endpoint, uh, uh, and there will be a mismatch on notepad.dxe because because of uh, process Halloween, uh, so Mem Hunter will will flag that out. Uh, okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for for being here uh, for attending our call. There are some uh, stickers about the tool uh, on the on the tables. Uh, yeah, thank you very much.